So, here we are once more in Ezekiel. And once more we see God having Ezekiel enact a seemingly abstract illustration to express the coming judgment on Israel for their sinful ways. Ezekiel being told to cut off all the hair from his head and his face to be discarded in several different ways is... Well, how, how about we let the Lord speak for himself? This is what the Sovereign Lord says. This is an illustration of what will happen to Jerusalem. I placed her at the center of the nations, but she has rebelled against my regulations and decrees and has been even more wicked than the surrounding nations. The Lord goes on to specifically state that the sins of the people ranged from idolatry to defiling the temple with detestable sins. The rest of the chapter goes on to detail about the coming judgment with mentions of disease, famine, death, families turning on each other, and even animal attacks. Kind of makes you wonder what the point would be. Verse 13 gives the answer by saying, Then at last my anger will be spent, and I will be satisfied. And when my fury against them has subsided, all Israel will know that I, the Lord, have spoken to them in my jealous anger. God allows these things to happen to redirect our sights back up to Him, not just in recognition, mind you, but in changing our ways to those that honor Him and are righteous. This is an example of how God takes sin seriously, even from those who are labeled as His children. It's interesting to read these words from a future perspective, because the Lord says that Israel will be an example of God's judgment to the surrounding nations. But it's also an example to us, the readers. To me, I can't help but see the ways that I am susceptible to sin in my life through the lens of idolatry and not taking care of God's temple. If any of us fall victim to any sins of the body and mind, lust, greed, hatred, deception, etc., we are in fact afflicting the temple of the Holy Spirit, of which we are bought with a price. I know we don't need to think too long or hard about idolatry because there's a myriad of things in our modern lives that can distract us from following a righteous God and we shouldn't be caught in surprise when God expresses judgment on us. We have the actual physical Bible, so what's our excuse? Anytime I read chapters like this or come across real temptations in my life, I can't help but recall the verses from James chapter 1. So let's let this be our takeaway for today. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted by evil nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Mm -hmm.